Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a system of equations. So we do have x plus y is equal to 84, and we have the ratio LCM to GCD, and that is equal to 12. Now, let's just go ahead and review what these mean. LCM stands for the least common multiple of x and y, and GCD stands for the greatest common divisor of x and y. So we're given the ratio of the LCM and the GCD, and we're given the sum of the two numbers, and we're supposed to solve for X and Y, which are positive integers. All right, great. So we're gonna be using a lot of good algebra here. Let's go ahead and get started. So the first fact we're gonna use here is, which is obviously very important in number theory, if you know the least common multiple and the greatest common divisor of two numbers, then you can multiply them, and the product is gonna equal the product of the numbers x and y, which is a very well-known fact. And you can definitely prove this. The proof is not that complicated. You can look it up, or I can include some links in the description as well. Now, so that's one of the facts we're gonna use. So if L stands for the LCM and G stands for the GCD, so I can go ahead and write down an equation like this. X, Y is equal to L, G, okay. It's not a commercial, we're not talking about the LG, LG, just the product L times G. Now, this is one fact that we can derive from here, but we didn't use any of the givens yet, right? So we're also given that the L to G ratio is equal to 12, which is kind of nice, right? So that, that means that I can write the L as 12G. That's great. Obviously, we already know the fact that I think we, we used this in a previous video. There was another video for GCD LCM, and... The fact that uh, GCD divides LCM is something that we've used before. So that's an important thing. And you can see that here too. Now, we're going to go ahead and substitute uh, this for L. So let's go ahead and replace L with 12G. That's going to give us XY is equal to 12G multiplied by G, which is 12G squared, where G stands for the greatest common divisor of X and Y. All right? So that's the first thing or equation that we're going to be coming up with. But of course, we do have other equations as well. For example, we, knew, we do know that x plus y is equal to 84. So we're talking about two numbers whose sum is 84. Now, at this point, you may just say, hey, why don't we just guess, right? Guess and check. Well, could, could it be 1 and 83, 2 and 82, so on and so forth? But there are so many cases to check. And it's also, it's not an elegant solution. It's just trial and error. I mean, sometimes we have to use it. But in this case, we have a more elegant solution. All right, so what am I gonna do? Well, I do know that x plus y is equal to 84, so let me go ahead and write that down here as well, and let's talk about what this means. So, this fact is actually super duper important, why? We're talking about two numbers here, x and y, and obviously, x and y are interchangeable, so because of the symmetry at the end, when we write our solutions as an ordered pair, x and y, if they're not equal, of course, they can be switched around. If they're equal, then it doesn't really matter, right? So that's something we can do at the end. But for now, try to focus on the system. We do have a system here, right? We do have x, y, and x plus y. But the, f the problem here is that we have two equations, but there are three variables. But notice that we have the x times y, which is a product. x plus y is a sum. Well, so what does that tell you? Well, it should tell you to use the Vietas formulas, right? So this calls for Vieta. And let me tell you what Vieta is briefly. So Vieta basically gives us relationships between the roots of a polynomial and its coefficients. And this goes for all degrees, obviously starting with the quadratic, you can go to any equation that is polynomial, nth degree, quartic, quintic, you know, nonic, whatever, doesn't really matter, vigintic, and you can use Vieta's formulas. They're awesome. So in this case, we have a quadratic because we're talking about two roots here, x and y. So let's go ahead and make up an equation. But Here's the million dollar question. How do you write the equation whose roots are given, right? So I'm given that I'm given that the roots are x and y. So how do you write this equation? Well, obviously, not to get confused here and to make it a little easier on ourselves, let's use a different variable. You, we could use a t, we could use a u, but u is kind of fun to use. So let's go ahead and use u. So if I use u as my main variable, how can I write the equation whose roots are x and y. And this is how I can write it, by Vieta. It's written as u squared minus the quantity x plus y times u plus x, y 
is equal to zero. Now, Vieta's formulas give us the sum of the roots as negative b over a and the product as c over a in a quadratic equation, and this is pretty much the same thing. Now, I do know these, so from here I can basically replace the x plus y with 84, so it's going to give me u squared minus 84u plus, and x times y. Now, I do not know the numerical value of x, y, but at least I have something, right? I mean, that will relate it to g, which is the greatest common divisor of these two numbers, and that's definitely going to help us find x and y. So, let's go ahead and replace x, y with 12 g squared, and the whole thing is equal to zero. So this is my quadratic whose roots are x and y. So basically, u represents x and y here, and again, they're interchangeable, so it doesn't matter which one is which, okay? So how do you solve this equation, though? Well, this is a quadratic, so what do you think? Since it's a quadratic, uh, it's either factorable or we're going to use a quadratic formula. Well, in this case, it's it doesn't seem factorable because of the g, but we can use the completing the square or just the formula. I'm going to use the formula because formula is more fun. Let's go ahead and use it. So the formula says u is equal to negative b, which is 84, plus minus the square root of b squared. In this case, I'm going to write it as 84 squared. That's a large number, but don't worry, I'm going to simplify it minus 4ac, and in this case, a is 1, so we're going to focus on c, rather. So it's going to be 4 times 12g squared, which is 48g squared. Again, these are large numbers, but I'm going to simplify them. And all over 2 times a, which is 2. Great. Now, before I uh, proceed, I'd like to simplify what's inside the radical, because that's going to help me later on. So how do you simplify this expression, 84 squared something? Okay, I'm thinking about this. 84 can be written as 4 times 21, so that is equal to 4 squared times 21 squared. And 48 is 16 times 4, so it is like 4 squared times 3g squared. Great. So that means that 4 squared can actually be taken out. But when you square root to 4 squared, it's going to become a 4. So our expression is going to look like this. 84 plus minus... 4 times the square root of, now inside the parentheses I have 21 squared, which is equal to 441, minus 3g squared is what remains. And this is cool because the numbers are much smaller, and definitely I don't have a fraction anymore because I can just go ahead and divide everything by 2. So from here, u equals 42 plus minus 2 times the quantity, square root of 441, minus 3g squared. Okay, great. Now, it doesn't look that great. I know that u is a radical. I mean, we have a radical on the right-hand side. u represents x and y, but how am I going to solve this, right? I have nothing about g besides this. Well, here's the thing. g is an integer, positive integer. So u, and u is an integer because that represents x and y. So whatever is inside the radical needs to be a perfect square. Otherwise, the answer is not going to be an integer. It's not even going to be a rational number, right? So what do I need? Well, this requires that 441 minus 3g squared be a perfect square. How about writing it as h squared alphabetically next letter after g, right? That's all I can come up with. So now let's go ahead and put the g and h on the same side, and we're going to be getting a really cool Diophantine equation. Of course, g and h are both integers here, positive integers, and we're talking about Kind of like a linear, because if you replace g squared with something and h squared with something, you got a linear diophantine. But this is fairly easy to solve, so let's not get into too much depth here. Let's divide both sides by 3, and here we're going to get something interesting, because 441 is obviously divisible by 3, and that is equal to 4, 147, right? Okay? Now, what am I seeing? Well, g squared is an integer, 147 is an integer, therefore h squared over 3 also needs to be an integer, which means h squared is a multiple of 3, but... That means h is a multiple of 3. Therefore, we can write h as 3k. Isn't that awesome? We're using a lot of number theory and algebra here, though, so that's kind of cool, I think. So, let's replace uh, h with 3k. That's going to give us 9k squared divided by 3 is going to give us 3k squared. Finally, this is the type of equation you want to get at because from this point on, it can easily dissolve. Now, if you look at the equation carefully, we're talking about a perfect square plus 3 times a perfect square. So you can kind of go into modular arithmetic here, like 3 mod 3 mod 5, so on and so forth. But you don't really need to complicate things here, because think about it. If k is equal to 0, obviously g squared equals 147 is not a perfect square. Uh, if k is equal to 1, you get g squared is equal to 144, which means that g is equal to 12. Great. So this gives us a solution. 
Are there any other solutions? Well, well, for k equals 2, we don't get an integer. k equals 3, k equals 4, k equals 5. And you don't have to go that far because, for example, if k is equal to 6, 6 squared is going to be 36, and then it's going to be 108, you're going to get 39. If k is equal to 7, you're going to get 49, and you're going to get g equals 0. Obviously, you don't want the greatest common divisor to be 0 because we're talking about positive integers here. Therefore, this is the only solution that we get from here. Okay, great. So we got k equals 1. We don't care about k, but we do care about the g. g is equal to 12. Now, what am I going to do with the g, though? I do need to find x and y. But remember, we solved an equation, a quadratic, in u, right? And u represents x and y. So if I go ahead and plug in the g value into this, I'll be getting the x and y value. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So u is equal to 42 plus minus 2 times the square root of 441 minus 3g squared, right? That should be our equation. And now what am I going to do? I'm going to replace g with 12. So if you replace g with 12, u is going to be 42 plus minus 2 times the square root of 441 minus 3 times 12 squared, which is equal to 144. And if you divide, I mean multiply, you know what I'm talking about, right? 3 times 144 is going to be 441. And this is actually going to be, let me see, looks like I made a mistake here. Okay, so g is equal to 12, and 3 times 140, um, 144 is going to be, I'm sorry, apologize. This is going to be 432, therefore. Okay, there you go. So the difference is going to be 9. So u is going to equal 42 plus minus, okay, this is going to, the whole thing here is going to be the square root of 9, which is 3, 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So from, from here, we're going to be getting two values. u is either 42 plus 6 or 42 minus 6, but that represents, remember, the x and y values. So this means that our solutions are going to be made up of two pairs and they're going to be 48 comma 36 and 36 comma 48. So those are the x, y values that work and those are the only values that work. Well, this brings us to the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like and subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.